Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Shelley and today we are going to talk about one of the most important remedy of homeopathic materia medica. This is that remedy which I believe every homeopath should carry in his pouch because you never know you may need this remedy to anyone. Maybe you just see a patient collapsing, you may use this remedy or a neighbor may use, uh, need this remedy or you may need this remedy when you are in a state of collapse. So this is one of the most important medicine which you should carry in your kit. Like you have other remedies like amyl atrosum, aconite, rustox, belladonna. Uh, these are some of the important remedies and this carbo which has to be in your important remedy list. So this is the importance of carbo tablets. So if this is such an important remedy, it is very important to understand the logic behind this remedy, to understand the pathophysiology of this remedy, to understand the mind of this remedy and to understand the child of this remedy. Like what is a child, what is a carbon child or what is the mind of a carbon patient and how does the pathophysiology of this remedy evolves. So we are talking about carbo wedge today and you know you just look around you to start with carbons like you know everywhere around you be it your shoe, be it your lace, be it your clothes, be it a tree or be it a paper or be it your pen, everywhere you have carbon, everywhere from your lipstick till your shoe, from your hair to your nails, everywhere you have carbon as a base. Even your cell, every cell, the support system of every cell is carbon. So this is such an important remedy of our materia medica and thanks to Hahnemann to patentize this remedy and it has been a tremendous help to all of us. So in the la in, in last, I'll just share with you a case how I prescribed carbo waste to a patient who had just collapsed in train when I was traveling in my internship. So after that, I understood what is the importance of this remedy, carbo tablets. So if it is such an important remedy, we can say it is a vital spark of life. Vital means very important. Spark is it gives back the spark. You know. A patient is suffering from a disease, for example, since long and he is not getting better. He is suffering, he is not getting better, he is not getting better. He is moving, he is walking, he is eating, he is sleeping, he feels stagnant, but there is a spark in his life. Carbo wedge will give the spark. If the patient is collapsing, he has been given a lot of medicines, he is in ICU and he is not responding to the medicine. He is losing, 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 losing and everyone is giving up. This carbo wedge can become the vital spark of his life. A child who is in school and who doesn't like to study. I'll explain you later on what is a carbo wedge child. Maybe this remedy will get back the spark in the child. So carbo wedge is such an important remedy. But we have to understand the pathophysiology behind this remedy. Because until we don't understand the pathophysiology, we may lose this remedy. Like giving an example, we have a rubric sudden collapse. So there are so many, so many medicines in this collapse. You have arsenic, you have sickel corn. You have uh, Viratrum album, you have Camphora, you have Carbo Witch. So now as a doctor, we have to understand when to give Carbo Witch, when to give Arsenic, when to give Camphora, when to give Sequel Corn. So today we'll talk about Carbo Witch, when to give Carbo Witch, what are the indications of Carbo Witch and what is the pathophysiology behind this collapse. So once we understand that, we'll be able to prescribe Carbo Witch tablets. So, <clears throat> The main theme behind carbo wedge pathophysiology is imperfect oxidation. So due to this imperfect oxidation, there is an imbalance between uh, you know, the free radicals released and the electrons, which causes a lot of sluggishness in the patient. So you can see the bad effect of imperfect oxidation in his blood and circulation, and his discharges, and his digestion, respiratory system, and weakness. So these are some of the areas where you can boldly see the effects of imperfect oxidation and how the pathology develops because of the base of this, uh, you know, symptoms or organs. So talking about blood and circulation, because of imperfect oxidation at the level of blood and circulation, the capillaries become very stagnant. They are not that good at exchanging of oxygen. They are not that good with exchange of uh, gases. They are not that good or strong enough for a proper circulation. So we see there is a lot of lethargy in the patient. There is a lot of stagnation. You know, we see that the, this carbo patients specifically have a lot of water retention in them. 
retention 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 because of imperfect oxidation like asculus so in asculus it is because of the liver the portal circulation is deranged but in carpovis the whole system the whole human system there is imperfect oxidation and the whole circulation is affected so this blood it goes everywhere so because of imperfect circulation as a theme imperfect oxidation as a theme when it go to cvs it will cause its bad effects when it go to uh, you know at kidney level where there is exchange of toxins there it is affected it goes to the digestion and we get the great symptoms of digestion respiratory system and weakness so in putridity we see the discharges of carbovirus is very bad they are very bad odor they have, the discharges are putrid you feel as if something is rotting inside the patient you cannot stand behind him his vomiting his perspiration his stools his urine they are putrid they are decaying from inside think of carbon there's lot of stagnation think of carbon the digestion becomes so slow that the patient eats and he see, he has a sense of fullness the motions don't go ahead the gases don't go ahead they just bloat 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 and there's passing of platelets and irritation which is bad smelling then you have respiratory system in that the patient has lot of cough rattling cough the loose cough but because there's no strength left he cannot expel the cough like attentat and with all this there is a accompanied weakness so when you see the patient developing in these feet you think of carbo wedge as one of the remedy imagine a patient slowness sluggishness lot of water retention lot of gaseous distension lot of putridity in his discharges if he has cough he has rattling cough which do not come out he is getting weak or he walks little he feels tired he eats food he feel like sleeping you know we can think of remedy carbovitch so the patient when he goes on those stage and he goes in the state of collapse like for example the patient is having asthma and suddenly he collapses because of imperfect oxidation this the the lungs are affected or cvs is affected the patient can go in a state of collapse so when the patient goes in state of collapse now we have to understand what is the difference between the collapse of carbo wedge and other remedies so whenever the patient has lot of loss of vital fluids like maybe if diarrhea or hemorrhage perspiration or any vital fluid loss patient can suddenly go into a state of collapse it don't take time they will collapse so when you take a history of patient he may say yeah he was having bleeding or she was having menses or women you know there are so many women who say i have periods and after periods i collapse hemorrhage if the patient is having cr rectum and there is lot of hemorrhage or cr lug there is lot of hemorrhage and the patient suddenly collapses after that you can think of carbo which is a remedy collapse after loss of vital fluid also we have remedy like uh, china we have remedy like phosphoric acid now what is the difference between these remedies and carbo which is important for us to know as a homeopath because we don't have remedy for the collapse we have the remedy for the patient who is collapsed and how he is collapsing that is a synonym so once we understand that pathophysiology behind the collapse we can strike the synonym so when the patient collapses you will see there is lot of stagnation in the capillaries there is stupor the patient when is collapse it is very difficult to arouse that patient look into the eyes of the patient he is lusterless there is no spark no light you feel as if patient is dying he is now in the way of you know death partial collapse or he is uh, given up the doctors have given up there is a hippocratic phase and with all this there is a strong desire for fanning strong desire of fanning hippocratic look on the face coldness of respiration coldness of body blueness you can start seeing blueness in the mucosa of the patient or fingertips are becoming blue right the circulation is impaired impaired think of carbovitch and when there is suddenness so so you know many times you go to the bedside of the patient a b in icu and you see doctors have given up like no now we can do nothing <clears throat> relatives have given up and you have given up after giving so many remedies nothing is working out for him think of carbovitch when there is collapse and you give up like the you feel that patient is about to exhaust 
or there's a partial collapse with a lot of putridity, desire for fat and coatings. These have to come together to give carbon rich. So don't give for collapse, but you give to the totality which the carbo which is reflecting in the patient, in the case. So now let us understand the mind of carbo wedge child. So on this basis, I have treated so many children with carbo wedge with excellent results. They be, be it they are suffering from asthma, they have taken a lot of medicines for asthma or be it uh, like diarrhea or rheumatoid arthritis, whatever the case be, what was found in the essence of carbo wedge child is they are very slow learners. They, are, they don't have excitement in their life, you know. They are dull, they are lethargic, there is no excitement in their life. They don't participate in any activities of school or building. Usually children are very active, but they are very dull. They will not participate in sports, uh, they will not participate on stage. So these patients just have, like to have back seat and they are always tired. The mother says, my child is always tired, he is never fresh. And specifically in the evening, they are very tired. So whenever you see this, you may think of carbon, car calcareous, but it can be carbo wedge child also. Okay, so carbo wedge presents with lot of weakness, sluggishness, the child, and no, no desire or excitement to, you know, to take part in activities. So calcarea has excitement. Calcarea may have desire to take to participate in activities but because of its timidity they stay back but carbo which stays back is because they don't have that spark in them so whenever you feel there is a lot lack of spark in the patient think of carbon think of carbo which child so the mother will always say ki whenever i have to you know uh, push the child you no know, you study you go to tuitions you participate in these activities they fall sick or they become very peevish and irritable and these patients have desire for sweets, they have aversion to milk and fat. Now, the mind of normal carbovich patient is these patients are basically very sarcastic. They will never talk nicely. They will their, their speech will contain some element of sarcasm or mocking. They are generally uh, the people who have we see the rubric affectation, dongi pana. They will not talk, talk directly, but they will talk indirectly, right? These patients complain activate after any kind of excitement, specifically emotional, because they cannot take excitement, because the circulation is very sluggish. Any kind of excitement, they'll fall sick. Boss scolds, they'll fall sick. There is a deadline, they'll fall sick. There are some uh, reports to be made, they have to go for a presentation, they'll fall, fall sick. They cannot take any kind of excitement. And because of that, they will put efforts, efforts, efforts to do. They will not be able to do. They get easily discouraged. I am not able to do this. This is not my cup of tea. And they are again, the cycle continues. They are tired. Then they are not interested in anything. They don't have that spark in their life. Right? And gradually the weakness in memory develops. And they have a lot of anxieties, gastric issues, deciding for fun. Basically, they are very timid, bashful people. But they can be very angry and violent also. So the main theme is they don't have that spark. Okay, so this is something about carbo wedge. Before I end up, I'll, I'll share with you a very good case of uh, mine. I will not say mine. I was an internship and I was traveling in train. So there was a woman near me and she suddenly collapsed. Uh, I don't know what she was suffering from, but she suddenly collapsed. And she was in a state of partial collapse. And when she was collapsed, everyone got scared. It was a long journey. So I always used to carry a basic kit with me. So in that state of collapse, what I observed was there was a lot of coldness. The woman was telling, I want fan, come on fan me, I want fan. And there was a lot of gastric distensions and she was passing a lot of flatters, which was very bad smelling. The one thing I remember was carbo -witch. And I gave her the remedy carbo -witch. And after 15 minutes, she was quite stable. And she was quite stable, she was uh, talking properly and in half an hour or one hour she started eating food and she was quite okay. So this is when I gave in my internship and I realized this remedy is one of the most, most important remedy and we never know when we can use this remedy for ourselves, our patients, our relatives or in the ICU. So to sum up with carbo I can tell just 
three things. One is spark. Search for spark. If your patient doesn't reflect any spark, think of carbons. There's a lot of putridity. Think of carbons. Fan. Yes, carbons. Okay. And with all these symptoms, there is a defective oxidation, imperfect oxidation. Think of carbon. So this is for today. I hope you all liked it. I'll come back soon with some more remedies for you. Take care.